So how are we going to use the ideas that we have just developed to explain how a potential meter can function like a voltmeter? Recall first that if we have a perfect voltmeter, it does not draw current from the circuit which it is measuring. In our potential meter, this part of the circuit is like our voltmeter with the jockey as the pointer and the ruler like a scale. For it to function like an ideal voltmeter, it also cannot draw current from the circuit which it is measuring. Let us use this example to illustrate further. If I have a cell in which I want to measure the EMF, if I have an ideal voltmeter, when I connect it across the cell, because an ideal voltmeter has infinite resistance, it should not draw a current from the battery. Then, it would measure the EMF. To further check whether it is drawing a current, I can put in a galvanometer to detect any current. If there is no current through the galvanometer, then I know the voltmeter is reading the EMF. Hence, one of the key requirements for a potential meter to function like an ideal voltmeter is that it should not draw current from the circuit it is measuring. We'll use this idea now to see how a potential meter can do that. Let's consider our task of measuring the EMF of a battery with a potential meter. Suppose our driver cell is 10 volts. The battery will set up a potential difference across the wire with the left edge to be at a higher potential and the right edge to be at a lower potential. Let us now connect the positive terminal of the dry cell to the end of the wire at higher potential. For ease of analysis, we will now set the negative terminal of the cell to be zero potential. This will mean that these points here are 10 volts. This point is 6 volts. As the negative terminal of this cell is 4 volts lower than the positive terminal. Now let us tap the jockey of the galvanometer close to the 10 volt end of the wire. When you do that, you essentially split the wire into two parts. One of resistance R1 and the other of resistance R2. Since we have tapped very close to the left end of the, galvano of the wire, this value should be very close to 10. Let us put it as 8. Now we can fill in the currents in the circuit. Starting from the driver cell, this is I0, and logically, this should also be I0. Whatever current that comes out from the battery must go back into the battery again, so this current should be I0. Now we have come to the tricky part of the circuit, the lower branch. We know that current always flows from higher potential to lower potential potential through a resistor. Therefore, we can deduce that the current through the resistor, this internal resistance, is towards the left. Currents cannot disappear along a wire. Hence, across the 4 volt cell, it should also be in this direction. Finally, following the same argument, the current through the galvanometer should be in this direction and this part of the circuit should also be in this direction. Okay, we have now completed the current in this part and we are left with this branch. Again, there are two ways to analyze this. We see that currents in this branch and this branch will meet at this junction. So the only way that they can flow would be through the resistor in this direction and hence we have this current. Similarly, the other way to look at it is that this is a point of higher potential, this is a point of lower potential, so logically, current will always flow through from higher potential to lower potential through a resistor. We have now completed all the currents in the branches. Let us take a step back and focus on our original question. Is our potential meter here functioning as an ideal voltmeter? We see that in reality, if we replace this potential meter like, an voltme like a voltmeter, if it is ideal, it should not be drawing any current. 
But in this case, we are actually drawing a current and this is actually measured through the galvanometer. Secondly, remember in reality, we do not know exactly what is the EMF of this cell. We are trying to determine it. However, since the current in both parts of the wires in the potential meter circuit is different, we cannot apply the potential divider principle to the wire. And the PD drop across this wire will not be proportional to L for the whole length of the wire. Therefore, we have no way to know what is the actual potential difference across R1. Therefore, we will also not be able to find what is the potential difference across these two points. In all, this potential meter is not functioning as a perfect voltmeter. Now let's see if you understood what we have just done. Repeat the analysis like before for the case when the jockey is tapped close to the other edge of the wire. See if you can deduce the direction of currents in all the branches in this circuit. See also if you can logic out why the potential meter is not functioning as a voltmeter. Pause the video now and when ready, play the video again to check your analysis. Again, we see that the battery sets up a potential difference across the wire with a higher potential here and a lower potential here. We again allocate the potential at the negative end of the battery as zero and hence we can get all these values of the potential. If the positive end of the 4 volt cell is at 10 volts, then the negative end will be at 6 volts. Since the jockey taps close to the right end of the edge of the ruler, the value of the potential there should be closer to zero. Let us assume that this value is 3. If this is 3 volts, this means this is also 3 volts. And since current always flows from higher potential to lower potential, therefore the current through the resistor R is towards this direction. The current that flows through the resistor must be the same current through the battery, hence we also have this current. Using the same logic, we are also able to label these two currents. Next, let's look at the upper branch. Let the current from the driver be I0. Since whatever current that comes out from the battery will be the same current that flows back into the battery, hence the current through R2 is also I0. Finally, for R1, current always flows from higher potential to lower potential. We can see that, therefore, the current through R1 should be in this direction. We see that, as with the previous case, the potential meter itself is still drawing a current from the lower cell that's trying to measure. However, what is interesting here is that if you look at the galvanometer, this current is now in opposite direction as compared to the previous case. We will talk more about that shortly. Also, Note that, as with the previous case, the currents through this whole length of wire is not constant. Hence, the potential difference here across the wire is not proportional to L along the whole wire. We cannot therefore determine the PD across R1 from the length of the wire. In all, this potential meter circuit in this case is not functioning as a voltmeter. We do notice something very interesting here. When the jaw key was placed close to the left end of the wire, the current through the galvanometer was in one direction. But when the jaw key now is placed close to this other end of the wire, the current through the galvanometer is in the other opposite direction. Hence, there must be a position along the wire where there is no current through the galvanometer. Let us now analyze that position. Let us now consider this case where the jockey taps just right so that the galvanometer registers no current. The galvanometer is set to register a now reading. We repeat our analysis as before. In this case, since no current flows through the galvanometer, 
there would be no current through the bottom resistor. Hence, the potential difference across this bottom resistor is zero. Since this point is at 6 volts, this point would also be at 6 volts, and this point would also be at 6 volts. Since there's no current flowing through the lower part of the circuit, the upper circuit is not drawing any current from this branch, nor this branch. Hence, we can also conclude that IR is equal to I0. The current through the whole wire is essentially the same, hence the potential difference across any length of the wire will be proportional to the resistance of the length of the wire. And since R equals to rho L over A, the PD across this length of wire L will also be proportional to the length of the wire itself. Therefore, we can also write that the PD across R1 to the PD across R2 is equal to the ratio of R1 is to R2. And it can further be simplified to the ratio of L1 is to L2. Now let us take a step back. In this case, we also see this. Number one, your potential meter here is now not drawing any current from the circuit it's trying to measure. Secondly, knowing the length of a section of a wire potentially allows us to know the potential difference across the wire. This PD here also corresponds to the PD across the lower part of the circuit. Essentially, the upper part of the circuit is functioning as a perfect voltmeter. Let us now consolidate the key ideas of a potential meter. A potential meter is a circuit that can be used for measuring potential differences. To measure the potential difference, the potential difference to be measured has to be put into the circuit with the higher potential corresponding to the higher potential end of the wire. Readings are taken by tapping the jockey along the wire until the galvanometer reads zero. When that happens, the potential meter is set to be balanced and AC is known as the balance length. Since no current flows in the lower part of the circuit, which is known as the secondary circuit, the PD across AC is also equal to the PD which is to be measured and this is proportional to the length of AC. Using these two ideas, we can now calibrate this potential meter against known voltages and the potential meter can act as a voltmeter.